he had he had something he had maybe an, a knife maybe um, a gun i don't know what i was trying not to like realize i was get, being robbed and i was being assaulted really this guy was really aggressive was uh, actually actually threatening me with literally beating me up I, there's really nothing i can do here i'm i'm fucked Good morning, it's uh, 4 a.m. and I'm currently waiting to take a flight to a country that has been closed for foreigners for over two months and has been opening and closing with any kind of notice or previous uh, advice. I'm only going to be there for 48 hours, so it's going to be quite rushing and challenging, but we'll see. arrived to Morocco there you see a plane just leaving it was probably the longest uh, passport check I've ever been through I don't know why they took so long but yeah I just arrived here it's 8 a.m. and uh, I don't know I think I will catch a bus or maybe a taxi I don't know I don't even know if I'm allowed to <laughs> to film here we'll see just arrived to my Riyadh here in Marrakesh and it is quite nice as you can see it only costs 20 euros the thing is uh, reception is just here so I don't I can't speak too loud since everyone would hear me um, it has been quite an intense first 30 minutes here in Marrakesh but um, now I think I'm heading out again I have to change some money and we will see <laughs> what awaits me in this city Now in the middle of the Medina, and I'm, I'm looking for this, for the entrance of this, uh, I think it's a palace or something. So we'll see. Did you hear that sound? It's the birds. I'm currently at the Badi Palace. This place was built during the uh, 15th to 16th century when Marrakesh had its renaissance. And it's pretty cool. Uh, it's quite uh, expensive, the entrance. However, I had some cool shots here and I think it's worth a visit. And there's some uh, birds there making some cool noise. I don't know, it's, it's so nice. I just bought this bread for only 10 cents, which is one dirham here. Cheap ways to eat here, I guess.
I'm currently at the Bahia Palace, which is another palace which is very close to the other one I visited just uh, 30 minutes ago. This one was built way uh, later, like around 19th century, I think. And the price is just the same, it's 7 euros, and I think it's quite expensive, I think. Like, you can get food for a very, very cheap price, but then you waste all your money in visiting a palace, which is nice, but I mean, 7 euros, come on. In Spain, this costs like half of the price, and they have discounts for uh, students or whatever. Not here, I guess. The building you just saw, which is this one here, this is a Kutubia, and this is one of the main uh, hotspots of Marrakesh. It's a very old tower, and I think it serves a mosque, which is also very important. I don't know the details, but it looks cool. I just had I just had the worst experience traveling of my life. Let me just put it let me just uh say some context. I was uh having a really nice trip here in Marrakesh. I everything was going fine. I was avoiding all these uh scammers and street vendors which are completely normal and it's it's a cultural thing here. But um yeah, I was doing really fine. I wasn't like following any tricks. I was uh, successfully uh, avoiding all these vendors and just enjoying Marrakesh. As you have seen uh, in the previous minutes, I went to these palaces, I went to these nice streets, I had some good food and everything was going fine. After having lunch, I went home, I went to my Riyadh. I took a nap because today I woke up at 2 a.m. and I needed to have some rest. And then I decided to head to the main square, to Jumalfna uh, Square, and then go to, I don't know, just, you know, uh, travel around, go through some uh, through some streets, uh, those kind of things you do when you come to Marrakesh, right? That's the, the funny thing. So I went to the square, um, and then I, I just took this uh, very um, narrow and straight uh, street, which is actually the, the, the shuk, the, the, um, uh, the marketplace. And I was doing fine, I was just uh, looking around. My plan was to go to the center of the Medina, because that's where you find a very nice mosque, and uh, in the madrasa, uh, an Islamic school. So the, the further you went into this street, the narrower it was getting, it gets, right? I mean, it's, it gets like narrower and narrower. And then the tourists, the tourists start disappearing. You start seeing less and less tourists and you see um, less shops and more local people uh, in the end. And everything was fine. And then I just um, arrived to this place, which was, uh, it, it didn't have a ceiling because the, the, the shook does have a, a small ceiling, but this place was like open space, open air. Uh, you could see the sun. And I was just walking and then all of a sudden, like a lot of people start like trying to talk to me, like saying, hey, hey, you cannot go inside this place. I, you cannot uh, continue this street on. And I was like just avoiding them because I was pretty sure they were trying to scam me. But this really um, kind guy came here, came and said, "Hey, um, don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm fine, cool. 
Uh, I'm just trying to tell you that uh, you should not go this way because it's prayer time and it gets in and this street is closed during prayer time, which is quite weird, right? But I just you know I don't I don't really know much about Marrakesh and uh, I don't know deeply their culture. I so I guess I just said okay, don't worry, it's fine. I will just uh, go away. I will try to find another way. And he said, oh, don't worry. I will take I will take you to to another place and you can and you can continue this. Um, this this walk and you, you, but you just cannot go through this uh, through this street. And I was like, okay, fine. I mean, he seemed a really normal guy and a really nice guy. He didn't really seem like the kind of guy that tries to scam you, Marrakesh. That's uh, it's not really the prototype. And he was like insisting, in, hey, don't worry, I'm cool, I'm cool. So I said, okay, you can take me. I was still not. Um, trusting him because you cannot trust anybody like it's for your safety you cannot trust anybody so he started uh, he started to to take me around all the streets he went like from one street to another to another to another he took me through many many weird and small and narrow streets and I was like are we really going to uh, the entrance or the exit of any place I'm not sure and he started talking to me uh, he did kickboxing and he was the champion of Marrakesh um, he told me he studied economics. <laughs> uh, he, uh, yeah, he told me his life. He asked me for my personal information, like what's my name or where where I'm from, stuff. I told him quite like mostly false uh, data because, uh, I, of course, I don't want him to know anything about me, especially if I'm waiting for him to to scam me in any way. But he didn't really seem the kind of guy that would scam me. So all of a sudden, we reached a very narrow street with no one there. And he told me, do you see this door? You have to go straight forward and then turn left, okay? Nice to meet you. He shook my hand and he said, wait, you should uh, type your my mobile phone so I can reach you uh, anytime. If you need, have any problems, you just you can count on me. He also asked me if I was with anyone here in Marrakesh. I told him yes, but it was false, of course. Um, and then... All of a sudden, um, I was already uh, leaving. I was like turning, like turning around to leave, and then this guy comes, like a, a really, a, a really weird guy with a really weird looking. He looked like he was really like threatening me. Like in some way, he looked like suspicious. He came to me and he started like saying, "Hey!" He was pointing to the other guy, and I turned around, and the guy said, "Hey, just give me some money because I, I helped you." And I was like, "You told me you were not going to." Um, to ask me for any money. Are you serious? Like, you, you really like shook my hand, you really um, gave me your mobile phone and now you're trying to uh, get some money from me. You told me not to. I, I was really expecting this. In fact, I was expecting him to take me to his father's shop or his shop in the in Medina and try to sell me something. I was really expecting that. Like, I said, okay, it's fine. I mean, I fell in the trick. It's the first time I'm, I'm, I'm being tricked here, so it's fine. I guess it's not such a big deal. So um, I said, okay, fine. So I I, I I really didn't I really didn't want to fight with anyone. So I took out my wallet and I gave him ten dirhams, which is one euro, which is quite a lot. And then he had a really bad reaction. He started like shouting at me, like being like very like, hey, what, this is disrespect, whatever. He started like uh, really pissing me off, like saying, uh, this is uh, no, this is disrespect. And he pointed uh, at uh, uh, an, uh, a note of 100 in my, my wallet and said, give me that. That was like, no way, that's all the money I have. And then the guy, the other guy, the random guy that came, he um, he stood up, he, was, he had something in his pocket and he was like, do you want to fight? Do you want to fight? Do you want to fight? And he was really, get, really getting aggressive and they were really like threatening. I was completely alone. I had no one to go to. I was being robbed. He was like saying, "Give uh, t uh, do what he says. And I was like, okay. I gave him the 100 he asked for, uh, he asked for which is 10 euros. Um, but then he said, no, 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 I want you to give me uh, the other 100. And I was like, no way. I mean, this is no way. I mean, are you serious? I was try still trying to play the bro thing uh, because I was really, I was trying not to like realize I was get being robbed and I was being assaulted, really. I just gave him another, uh, the, the other 100. I was like, okay, uh, I, there's really nothing I can do here. I'm, I'm fucked. But it doesn't end here. No fucking way. 
So I gave those 200 to this guy, and I was like, already, I, I, really, wanted, I really wanted to go. And But the other guy, the really weird, the, the one that was threatening me with something, which I didn't know what it was. I was really, and that was really getting aggressive because the other guy was aggressive, but not much. This guy was really aggressive, was actually threatening me with literally beating me off. So um, I, uh, I, uh, I was like completely shocked. And I was, uh, he, he, he told me, Give me all the money you have. Give me, uh, and he pointed at me. He pointed at uh, a twenty euro uh, banknote I had uh, in my wallet, and there was a, a twenty euro banknote and a five euro banknote. And I was like, really not. That's all the money. It's, that's literally the the last money I have. If I give you this, I'm literally fucked. I mean, I know you're trying to to assault me, but come on. I mean, I gave your friend literally twenty euros. Are you, are you fucking with me? And he said like, do you want to fight? Do you want to fight? He was really getting aggressive and uh, I was really scared. So I, I, I was giving him the five euros, but he said, no, give me the 20. And it all happened so fast. And I just gave him the 20 and he just, they just ran away. And I was completely left alone in the middle of, uh, of the Medina. I was completely lost. And I was fearing that someone could come and steal more things, steal my, my phone. That was the only thing of value I had on me. So I started walking, like, completely desperate. I just was lucky enough to just find another open space place. And I realized I had just reached my goal, which was to go to these uh, madrasa and these mosques. So um, I said, okay. I have to head south because this place is in the center, so I have to, I, I don't know how I did, but I, I, I found a way out. I managed to go again to the narrow uh, street where all the shops were at the beginning. I managed to get there and then I got to the, to the, to the, to the main square. I was really shocked. I went to our bank. I took some money because I didn't have any money left and I handed it to, to whatever. I'm just even scared to go out of my hotel because I don't know what can happen. So, yeah. My advice here is never go alone to these places, never go alone to Marrakesh because these things can happen and what happened to me here today, it was because I, I came here alone, I had had a partner, um, I would be secured, I would have another uh, another pair of um, of hands to help me. Of course, Morocco is not a dangerous place. The people are really nice and everything is, is fine, but these situations can happen. So please, if you ever come here, especially if you're a woman, and especially if you're young, um, as me, just be careful, stick to the basics. And and if you if, if anyone tries to talk to you, just say no and just go away because it can happen what just happened to me. All of this is so good, like, wow, so many things. It's just so nice. I am back at the city. I'm gonna try to see all the places I wanted to visit today. Uh, I'm gonna try to overcome this uh, fear I've created out of what happened yesterday. So, yeah, let's go. at the Orientalism Museum here in Marrakech. It's really nice. Uh, it's uh, an artistic movement 
which I really enjoy and I don't know I think if you are ever in Marrakech you should check it out of course I didn't take any pictures to the photos because on the picture sorry I didn't take any pictures to the drawings because it's disrespectful but if you ever come here you should try this museum also they have these terrace with they serve you fresh uh, juices and good views so yeah I'm not going back to the place where they uh, assaulted me yesterday so yeah let's see maybe um, I go back to the square and I try uh, having lunch in a traditional place I don't know we'll see for me coffee and this place is so nice I mean everything is so good people are so nice look at this and the cat at the airport now I'm leaving this is probably one of the best airports I've ever seen I just want to um, say that this wasn't a bad experience at all I really enjoyed Marrakesh in the end although I had this very bad experience you cannot uh, use one experience to just set the, the, the condition for the whole trip so I guess that's it again I want to give a huge thanks to the staff of the Riyadh I was in I will link the uh, the place down below because they were really nice and really helpful that's all and see you soon